it's the first feminist love story I've seen. Yeah. It's the first feminist. So I have one question, which I will actually want to ask. I've been meaning to ask uh, an intelligent man. I didn't come across any for a while. So now that we are here, so what I. What about you? Mean you have not dated intelligent men? No, no, no. For a while. For a while. I okay. haven't uh, come across. So this question I want to ask that there is this relationship I was in, and I was dating this guy who's not an actor. He's a doctor, and for us, though I was a few years ago, I was in my mid twenties. He's a young doctor, but I still made a lot more money than him. For me, it was nice to go back to that environment where I actually grew up in. You know. real people real environment it was it was little you know it took me aback to lose my identity like because there were white people he is an english guy for me it was little hard to sort of come to a world where i'm just you know like leading an anonymous life but i still came to terms with it it was hard for him to adjust to my environment though i don't have hanky panky filmy friends all my friends are very humble but every time he'd meet, meet my friends he would ask me What did your friends think of me? Am I some small fry? He never spoke like that, you know. And it was so heartbreaking to see him under that kind of a stress. So I remember one incident when we were in London, and how your movie star friends suggest you places that to go to, you know, like one of the best restaurants in the world, and all of that. So I said that, you know, we should go here. And he googled, and he's like, I w- I don't want to spend so much on food. I said I want to go there and I want to pay for it. Can I? Because he liked paying for everything. He seemed okay with that. We went there. We had dinner. It was amazing. When it ca- it came to paying for the food, I swiped the card and everything. And he started to get psyched in a very unnatural way. You know, like he would ask me, "What is this waiter thinking about me?" I said, "Do you know the waiter?" And he's like, "No, but even that lady was looking at us." I said, "Do you know that lady?" <laughs> He said, "Why do men do that?" And that was that. That dinner became like a trauma, and I'm sure it was equally traumatic for him as well because it led to a, you know, like an argument and then fight and and I, I and I cursed myself for even suggesting that I want to pay, you know. But if I can do laundries for him, go back to an anonymous life, be you know, like a major movie star, he cannot come to terms with my environment, even if it is for like half an hour. Why do men do that? Okay. So I'm not going to defend men, and I'm not going to make this about men versus women. But I do want to tell you one thing: just as women are conditioned to be a certain way, men are also culturally conditioned. You know, masculinity is not discussed much. It is just told. A man is told, "You are what you earn. You are the money you make. And when you make your money, you take care of your woman." And that's so ingrained in a man that it. For many men, it's part of their identity. Unless you are beisharam like me, मुझे कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता. It's not beisharam, right? Like if he's my partner. <laughs> I know, I know. I mean, no, no, jokes apart. And I think men are told that this is this is what it means to be a man. You need to be able to. You should always pay in a restaurant. And maybe in that restaurant, the restaurant, even the waiters always every day see the men paying, especially when a beautiful girl comes. And I think he felt small. should he have felt too small no i think if he was secure about the relationship with you he would have not felt small but i think it was not about the money it was not about who's paying it was it seems like this man was afraid to lose you he felt that i am not man enough for her and she like every other woman uh, will care that i never pay or i'm not able to afford but then how to have relationship a healthy relationship With your partner, when you can't always pretend to be, you cannot pretend to be a nobody all the all the time, right? Like for how long I can go on with a sort of facade that, oh, fine, I'm just like another girl. I am not a movie star. No, no, I am not this capable person, and I do not visit fancy restaurants. I cannot go on pretending, no. like that's, that's not that's natural. That's the issue at large, and that's what the book deals with as well. I think so, sh- like in some ways. we have changed so we have colleges we have jobs we have opportunities that a girl can come from a ordinary background and become very successful whether it's a banker scientist doctor or a movie star but when they actually become successful society the social structures have not changed we don't know what to do with them every man wants a girl who's not more successful than her now what will happen to kangana inke liye aadmi kahan se banega right 
so no, then my... then she is like now saying i need more love are what is happening the moment i start getting awards my boyfriend start getting insecure so that's a it's not her fault whereas for a man when he wins an award the girl is I expected will, I to i will organize a party for him party you know but so, when i get an award you know i became the object of suspicion that you know okay now what's going on with her you know so I, so it's a that's a dilemma and i think that's what this book is trying to understand address that you've made given women the opportunity to shine we always keep saying empower the woman there's a scene in the book where the girl tells her mother why did daddy tell me when i was a little child we used to oh, go that, to that 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 line just made me cry i was like you know sobbing like a little girl when i read that it's so powerful so she just says that dad used to tell me bete bade ho ke tum kuch bhi ban sakte ho you can be anything in life and now i'm successful now i'm making so much money my mom is saying you are not even a girl anymore tu chup chap ghar baith ke shaadi kyun nahi yeah, karti because Apne mom because mom tells her that she cannot put her so many zero oh. salary in her matrimonial because yeah. what will where will guys they will have less guys so they are making a shaadi.com matrimonial for her and mom says no 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 the girl makes around 2 3 crores a year she says don't put her don't put your salary then we don't get good boys so she said mom what is the point of my achievements if you're going to hide them yeah exactly and that's when she says this and this is i think was is the most amazing part of the book and the bankers can hide achievements but how is kangana supposed to hide her achievements they'll just read about it in the papers so that's it i think on that note we'll do a very quick read i don't like to do long readings and my readings are also like dialogue so i will read the boys part and kangana will read the girls part normally i have always written as a boy so i can guide it because it's a first person boy but this time it's going to be a little different because it's as a girl so obviously kangna has to read as a girl so she'll be reading the girls dialogues and the description and narrative those of you who have the book in their hand page 13 chapter 2 page 13 around the second paragraph the okay. scene is it's a destination wedding happening so the girl radhika has met the arranged marriage guy she is getting married to so she is not in love with him yet it's just a arranged marriage guy who works in facebook in it department um she doesn't uh, like she doesn't have a relationship with him or anything yet and they are in goa and they decide that let's spend some time together so the boy says let's go for a walk on the beach so this is the first meeting with this boy brijesh are yeah. you guys see chapter 2 page yeah. 12 also so, also i'll use two voice modulations yeah one so, for uh, radhika another for mini me which is she has a voice inside of her like a like a nagging a criticizing would you introduce mini me please so there is a mental radhika and there is a speaking radhika so kangna will do both okay okay so they are taking a walk kangna from so you just yeah okay so you just arrived yesterday from san francisco yeah i landed last night i wanted to maximize my leave one week for the wedding a couple of days after that at home in mumbai then bali for our honeymoon used it all up actually the word honeymoon caused a jolt in me mini me woke up again honeymoon after a dozen old skype calls meeting once over a day trip a week in bali with this man i am walking next to will we be naked stop it adhika focus on the moment uh must be tiring flying so much i saw you i'm not tired anymore <laughs> i smiled the man is trying maybe i should too rijesh smiled back he had innocent teacher's pet eyes how's facebook i had a busy month just finished an enterprise project so much work front end interfaces back end systems underlying apis APIs application program interface you know it's a sets of routines protocols tools for building software applications how software components interact basically <laughs> i nodded having understood not a word you, you have no idea what i'm talking about right <laughs> i laughed i know uh, not the no, i know <laughs> not the most exciting job in the world come on you work at facebook it's quite cool people think it is facebook so there's nothing to do we post pictures all day or something oh i'm sure it is pretty high tech behind the scenes 
should I talk more about personal stuff? He will happily discuss computer code for two hours if I let him. Radhika, take control. Okay, I think we'll stop here. Rest you have to read the book.